Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkter, and um, I've got to get right to it because this is a this is a big one. We're going to talk about automating FL Studio 7. Okay, um, there are a number of different ways to automate in this program, and a lot of these will apply to the earlier versions as well. I'm going to use the FL Keys um, simulator here, just because it's a quick and easy way to get a lot of sound out of it. I've got a very simple pattern here which is being played by an arpeggiator, so it's doing a minor chord. Simple. And we're going to automate a few knobs here and sort of change the course of the way this plays over time. Okay? So, um, this is how we start. I would like to automate um, this channel volume knob. I'm going to right click on the knob and I'm going to come down to say Edit Events. Okay. Now, if I want to, I can just simply draw a pattern any way I want to, and when the pattern plays, it'll track that volume. I can also create an LFO um, just by right cl or clicking that function, and we can give it uh, any shape that we want, any speed that we want. Very versatile tool, and it's very powerful. I can even create an, a different ending speed so that it starts off fast or maybe starts off wide and becomes narrow. Really cool. Uh, one of the things I like about FL Studio. I can also uh, scale the levels once I've created them to sort of interact with and manipulate the shape that we've already drawn. So, um, keep in mind when you use the edit events function, which is what I'm doing right now, it is channel or pattern specific. So if I draw this in pattern one and then I look at pattern two, you'll see it's gone. All right. What this means is that any time that pattern 1 plays, this automation data will be applied. Now, if I want to do something which I want to repeat over time, um, or rather um, over a different time signature, for example, if I want my volume to go up and down over the course of two bars instead of one, which is the length of this pattern, I will have to use a different, a different pattern to produce that automation. Now, FL Studio comes with a built-in called Main Automation. There's nothing special about this pattern. It just has that name. And it's designed for when you need to have a longer track on which to create automation events. All right. So once again, we can scale this any way we want. We can turn it into a sort of a, a sign shape or more of a pulse. But uh, that's fine the way it is right there. So uh, when we play our track right here um, it should go up and it should come down over the course of two bars all right now I do have some other automation events that we're going to talk about this down here is called an automation clip and this is another good way to do automation over the course of time um, in fact it's very flexible you can stretch it out over your entire song if you want and this is a vector based um, automation system what it is is I can I can draw pretty much any shape that I want, even yeah, straight up and down, square waves, whatever. And this is going to be um, drawn by right-clicking to create a vertex. And I can shape the tension using uh, these sort of circular handles. And I can change the amplitude using these up and downs. So um, it's a way to generate very smooth and easy shapes. And it exists as a channel in my automation clips section. Now the, the only thing I can really automate here, or the only thing I can control with this channel is the minimum value and the maximum value. All right, And the way that we create an automation clip is quite simple. Let me find my uh, piano plugin. Uh, this automation clip controls my treble, okay? And for a, for a compatible VST plugin I can simply click on the knob, right click and say create automation clip. Okay, but if it's not a built-in Fruity Loops plugin, what you do is move the knob just a little bit, tweak it, and then come to the menu where it says Last Tweaked Parameter. You should see the name of the knob, and you can create an automation clip that way. So, no limits here. Now, um, automation clips exist as sort of a formula output or a controller output, so the cool thing about them is I can map other knobs to this function, because now it appears in my internal controllers menu as an automation clip. So what I've done is I've got two knobs that will move together mm -hmm. 
and if I, if I want to get fancy, I can even change the mapping formula so that they move opposite each other. It's very easy. So that's an automation clip. Okay, you might have noticed that my panning function on my piano is going back and forth, um, sort of in a slow rhythm. Yep. And this is being done by a controller called the Peak Controller. And what the Peak Controller does, it's an LFO. The LFO is the bottom section. It's an LFO combined with a an amplitude tracker. That's the peak. It's just a dB meter. The louder the signal, the higher the value of the output. And the LFO is just a simple timing-based LFO, nothing fancy about it. It does have a variety of different shapes, as well as uh, tension control and um, phasing. Pretty uh, flexible LFO. And to, <clears throat> to assign a knob to that, simply right-click on the knob, go to Link to Controller, and we locate our controller. This is a peak control. It's on the master channel, master mixer channel, whatever, insert they call it. And uh, I just choose the LFO. Quite simple. So now you can see it's moving. I can, of course, give it any variety of different shapes or different mapping formulas, and those will apply immediately. Fruity Loops comes, or FL Studio comes with a formula controller, which gives you three automatable knobs, and the output is a formula based on those three knobs. And uh, you can get some pretty complex things out of here. Um, some are based on the time of the song, as you can see, um, some are based on randomness or some have other functions that are quite simple. A plus B plus C. There's even one for the mouse position so you can interact with a pattern or an effect in real time just by moving the mouse. Cool. Okay, uh, the last way to automate, if I have time, I think I have time, is the envelope controller. And this is a very cool function because you can interact with it using the step sequencer. Okay, um, simply draw an envelope um, this one is going to attack quickly and decay quickly. And it's got a medium low level and a pretty high um, envelope scope. So it's going to give it a high value when it triggers. And what it's triggering exactly is this delay. So the way it works is quite simple. Um, this knob is going to move through accept input whenever it gets triggered. So when we look at pattern one and play it, quiet so I can draw a step in here and whenever that step is whenever it triggers that step I'm going to get a delay on that note quite easy and a very versatile way to get a dynamic pattern um, without too much effort um, of course, just like Reason, if I want to get funky with my knobs here, uh, I'll set it into main automation channel, and I can, of course, draw any kind of pattern just like this. That's an example of how to automate um, or record an automation just using the record mode. The only thing you have to be careful of when you're in record mode is which pattern you're recording on. Make sure you check that, all right, because you could screw up the length of your initial pattern if you go over the limit. All right, uh, that's a lot to absorb, I know. Um, if you can pick up at least one of these automation features, it's going to help you out down the way. So this is Ace Pinkter. I'm signing off before I run out of time. Thanks for watching.